Hello everyone, today we're gonna do the Attacker's Guide to Viper on Bind. Now, remember, Viper is not a primary smoker. You can have that role filled, but don't expect the team to, like, you know, understand that your role is not a smoke in general. You're a sentinel that deals damage with his utility and by accident obscures vision. Remember about that. So when you go into agent selection, try to talk to other players and to tell them that you kind of need still a brimstone or an omen or an astra. All right. But now let's uh, talk a little bit about attacking a site. There are two like main things that I do or I try to do. And I try to do basically cut off the main uh, corners and then after that push the boundaries of my smoke uh, to be more aggressive. Now I typically don't play for post plant lineups, right? Yeah, I know a viper main that doesn't play post plant lineups, but I will do that if the uh, scenario dictates that I should use them. But typically I use my snake bites to delay a retake or to check corners. Now. The most basic attack wall that everyone knows how to do, right, is this one. This. But the thing is, not everyone does it correctly. What you want to achieve with it is, first and foremost, you want to achieve... This angle is covered. Like, you don't want your opponents to see short from heaven, right? This is the main goal, right? But when you do that it's very very important that you also have those two things land in the corner of the cubby because then no one can stand in this position because he doesn't see anything and even if he stands behind the wall he's still clipping through the toxic wall so you have an easiest kill because of that also that someone can be instantly affected and have to move forward an example when he loses recoil and he's also affected by dk so it's easier target to kill this is very important and this is something that you want to achieve with every cubby on every map. It's going to be also the, the case on B when I'll show you later. So that's that's the wall. That's the typical wall that you can use also for conditioning players on A. Because you can use it every round. If you have, you know, if you don't want to be super creative, you can use this wall every single round just to make sure that your opponents will not be certain if this is an attack or on A or not. Now... What I like to do when I know that my team also has a primary smoker like Brimstone, Omen or Astra is I'm going to use my Toxic Orb on lamps. This is the lineup on lamps. What you try to do is put this small diamond on the left click here on this, on this um, leaf on top of it. This way, right? So now uh, when you throw this, as you can see on the minimap, it lands in front of the lamp. So I'm, I'm not I'm not super happy about the positioning of the smoke, but you can use it from the same angle that you do the wall, and you can do it pretty fast when the barrier drops. But when you pop the barrier and the, uh, and the smoke, everything is covered. You can just push in through on the side with, you know, less corners to check, right? Remember that someone can still stand in this corner, but he will be affected by the DK, so he's an easier target to kill, right? The same smoke can be used from the other side of the um of short and what you want to do is you start the round by doing the wall and then you go through spawn back to a short before the barrier drops and you stand on this piece of um what is this are those lemons i don't know well you stand on this bag here next to the mario um mario pipe and you will throw this uh, the toxic orb, right? Let me recall it. You will throw the toxic orb for lamps, but with a better position. This is my favorite smoke on A. What you want to do is, as you can see under your health bar, there's like this white line. The white line has like a, a little bit thicker line in the middle of it. Now that beginning of the thicker line has to be aligned with this point here when the whatever hole of the window here uh, is with this line of whatever this is so in this spot this is where your line the thicker line of the health will align with this and as you can see on the minimap the smoke will land on lamps and this is the best smoke you can do on lamps in my opinion 
It's absolutely terrible to play against, and I'll explain you why. So basically, you do a setup like this. You cannot stand next to this corner, right? And you! I'm sorry. It's because of the toxin. Um, you cannot stand here next to the corner because you're either clipping outside of the corner or being affected by the toxic orb. So that's the first position already being checked, right? Uh, and you cannot stand in this corner, right? Because with the other smoke, a player can always stand here. But with this smoke, no one is able to stand in this corner. As you can see, the player cannot see anything. He's exactly cut off by the smoke. So if he's standing in the corner, not only he doesn't see anything, but when you go into the smoke, you exactly see him because he's blinded and you're not. Right? So essentially, uh, this is my favorite setup on A. Like, it's so powerful, I sometimes just do it every single round especially if I have a smoker in my team. Like, it's insanely powerful. No one will stand in the smoke. You will get typically one free frag because people will not realize that they cannot stand in this corner. And you lamps is essentially free after that, right? So you pop it, you go in, you check your corners. There's there's a possibility a player will go out of the smoke and stand in this, smoke, and stand in this, uh, in this area. But this is totally fine because he goes out of DK. So he probably has, like, around half HP. And... As you know, in this spot, you cannot you cannot stand, essentially, because it's a free kill. So it's super easy to get control of the site. And once you do that, you pick up the smoke. You ha you check, like, your, your angles and lamps. This is where I typically wants, want to, like, bounce a snake bite to make sure I have easier, tr uh, easier time. And shoot, that's because of the snake bite. Um Easier time to check in corners, right? I don't, I don't save my snake bites to play post plant. I use them to check corners to have a higher win rate on the round, not just to rely on post plants. So once I do that, when I go through the smoke, and I'm certain there's nothing happening here, right? I check corners and so on. I can use my toxin orb in a different position. So I can throw it here, an example, and which makes holding lamps way easier, right? While my teammates just plant the side and I'm holding, I'm holding lamps. Typically, you will have, like, one snake bite left, uh, which you can still use to delay push through the, through the lamps when your fuel is off. And you're, like, hold, holding lamps for 12 seconds alone, which is nasty because that's one-fourth of the, of the spike duration, right? Remember that always you want to, uh, typically on attack, you always want to pop your wall and your smoke at the same time because it doesn't consume more fuel, right? But that's basic Viper one-on-one. -on -one. Now... When it comes to uh, other uh, situations on A, there are two other walls uh, that I like to use. Um, and also one smoke that I try to use when I try to attack from showers with my ultimate. Maybe let's try to focus on the smoke first. You stand on the top shelf next to the bricks. You aim at this leaf and there's a discoloration on it. Here, as you can see, the lighter green meets a darker shade of the green. So you put your crosser at the top of it. Look at the minimap where it lands. And this, this smoke is absolutely insane when it comes to attacking showers. You cannot stand in this corner because you don't see anything, right? So no one can stand in this corner next to you in showers. If you stand outside of it, you can't see anything because it blocks the vision so much. No one from lamps can see what is happening from showers, right? So the player, if he's standing in this corner, he's alone, essentially. So you have the easiest time attacking from it. Uh, and in case you're aware that no one is next to you, you use this to ultimate outside of, uh, outside of, your, uh, outside of your smoke. And essentially have entire control in front of showers, which is nasty for spike planting. So that's one of my favorite smokes as well, but I don't use it that often. It's a little bit more... Um, uh, it's a little bit more niche, let's say like that, right? All right, let's recall the utility. And now other walls on A. Uh, not the biggest fan of them, 
but you can use them, you know? Still, the the basic wall that goes through cubby and through truck, and then the smoke on A-Lamps, I feel like it's in solo queue, is just so effective, you don't need anything. But uh, if case you really want to do something else, there are two options that you um, that you can use. One of my favorite uh, secondary walls is this one that allows you to lurk through a short, plays a little bit around one ways from your opponents, and allows uh, players to go through showers. So you aim it like this, so it touches the uh, cubby on the other side of the map, right? It doesn't leave you a lot of space. When it comes to lurking for a shot, you will see that in a moment. You, you have to be careful. But the main point of this wall is to make sure that the players cannot see showers. Alright? So in this way, when a defender sees this wall, he's very confused because first of all, like, you can hide behind this, but you can also use this to your advantage, right? So as an attacker. But as you can see, if there's a one way here, you can still lurk behind this wall. Right? So you nullify any one ways being put on the stack. That's one of the goals. Second goal, you can go outside of showers and check your corners easier because you don't have to worry about the truck. You don't have to worry about the triple stack, right? And the only thing that you have to worry is basically this angle and those angles. So way less stuff to check, right? Uh, when you go through the A short, there's only a few positions that you need to worry about. Before you turn on the wall, you check this corner, right? Then, before picking lamps, you turn off the wall, and you can go quietly, remember about the long barrel of Phantom, right? And check your close corners from this side, and you don't have to worry about lamps, right? This is a lurking wall from A short, and a push wall from uh, A showers. So typically, with this wall, you want to attack through A showers and plant in front of showers. Not attack through a short and have a lurker through a bath. Like, it's very important. This is meant to for a single player to go through a short, like, after a push is massively done by sh by, by showers. But it's one of my favorite favorite walls. Um, since uh, it's also pretty good if your, if your teammates will attack B and you just try to make a lot of confusion on A. Another wall that you can use on this side is something that I a lot, see a lot of teams in pro play use, but in solo queue, I wouldn't. I would say it's not the best, right? Because the thing is, this wall cuts off lamps and gives you a little bit of positioning here also to cut off CT and lamps uh, in the backside. But that's about it. Like as you can see, the, the the difference between this this wall and a smoke on lamps is that this has no pressure. Like, this only obscures the vision from A short, but a player can still stand in this corner. Like, he, he doesn't have any pressure in front of him because the wall is not really, like, a big power stop. So, in general, I really, really do feel like this wall doesn't really do much on solo queue matches, especially since you still need to do something about Haven. Like, you need to put your Toxin Orb, for example, in the truck, which is not the best. Um, so, yeah. Mm, so, that's basically A side. Right, so because then you have to put your Toxin Orb in this position, so you have the wall on this position, and you have less chance of being killed from the side, right? But then the Heaven is still open, so you have to reposition your Toxin Orb to land actually on the truck, but then the Showers is open. It's really not efficient. So the best setup on A is the wall through Kabi and the truck, and the Lamp Smoke. Either this one more in front of it, and the one in the, in the back of it. Alright, now Post Plant on A. There's a lot of stuff you can do. So there's 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 really a lot of stuff you can do. If it comes down to playing post plant lineups, you'll have three positions that I like to use uh, when it comes to your snake bites. First and foremost, remember that you can always use uh, your smoke to land on default as well, right? So for my positions uh, in the post plant lineup, I use two leaves: this leaf and this leaf. So for the smoke, you point towards the uh, uh, you point towards the lower one, and what you do is you put the middle of your crosshair in the intersection of the end of the leaf and like the top of the leaf here, right, like around here, and then you see it lands exactly on the default. So this is in case you're like 
actively lurking somewhere, you didn't really help your teammates so much, right? Which shouldn't be the case, by the way. You should be able to help your teammates even when you're lur lurking, like with your setup on, on the smoke on lamps. This is why I'm not a fan of post plan lineups, right? But this, this allows you to essentially put a smoke on default, even though you, you aren't on site, right? And then when it comes to snake bites, one setup for a snake bite is exactly the same rule as with this leaf, but with the second leaf, like this. Right? You can go a little bit left, uh, a little bit more right, because that depends on your spike situation. Like, if the spike is here, that's uh, that snake bite was okay. If you know that the spike is here, you can aim a little bit to the right. If you know that the spike is planted in this spot, aim a little bit higher, right? A little bit higher. So this spot is more affected. You just adjust the, the, your lineup to where the spike is. Now, that's one position, right? Now, there's another position uh, that you use the barrel. The barrel is very, uh, let's say, flexible. But I do like this position more because you're closer to A short and you're faster on the attack. Like, you can just be here, pop the molly, pull out your gun, and you're ready to shoot. Right? And then when you're still in this position and try to kill people, you can go super fast to this position, do this lineup again, and go back. It allows you to fight very fast. This is why I don't like any lineups from super far away from spawn or whatever. Those are bullshit lineups. Don't use them. You want to be mobile, you want to be active, and you want to be close to your teammates so you have a chance at winning gunfights. Right? Also remember, if you do this lineup here, you're for a bit, bit of the time, open to market. So you do this very fast. You don't stand looking at, at, this, uh, at the heaven, you know? You don't stand like this. You do it fast. You know when you want to do it, you go here, you pop it, and you check your angles in case you, you are being pushed. Now, when it comes to the barrel position, very easy to remember how to do the lineups here. You use this building, and you align... Your ultimate icon, the greenish rhomboid, with the uh, with the triangle, so it creates like a bigger um, geometrical shape, as you can see here. Super easy to remember, right? This is a lineup for default. And as well as always, depending on the position of the spike, you can go left, right, top, bottom to adjust it, right? That's one position. Now, from the same position, uh, and you will use the same thing on the building, which is the triangle, you can use it for showers, if, the, if it's planted on the triple box. You use your fuel um, indication. It's always there. doesn't matter what does it show. Um, you always point it just at the, at the uh, triangle. And it lands on the spot on the triple boxes, right? Third position where I can use my lineups for A is in this corner here next to the boxes in front of showers. First position for showers, you use your health line and the beginning of it on this small gap where the metal beam, steel beam, meets the wall, right? In this spot here. So you do it like Clutch. this, here, in this spot. You put up your snake bite, click, and it lands on showers, on the triple box. In the same spot, right? Uh, then for default, send in the same spot, and you will use your uh, letter of your bind, of your snake bite. For me, that's F. You see it here on the bottom. You will put it on the steel beam and fl uh, and this leaf connection. So in this spot. Like this. That's basically it. Those are the three positions that you will use your post-plant lineups from. But remember, post-plant lineups are the last resort. You shouldn't be even having snake bites typically. Uh, uh, like, or even be here. Unless you're a very big lurker. Uh, but yeah. That's about it. Now, when it comes to attacking B, or maybe lurking a little bit, uh, we can talk a little bit about that, actually. So, 
since I really like my personal playstyle on bind is I really like attacking A as a player. And I do tend to also lurk a lot uh, from A. I also realize that sometimes I'm very far away from my teammates when they already have an execute. And there's no one trying to rota rotate through A short or showers or taking the teleport, right? So I'm basically useless as a lurker because everyone went through uh, A spawn, right? And I don't have an impact and I'm already too late. So I, I wanted to fix that by having lineups in front of the TP, which is very easy to do, all right? So when you TP and you know that there's no one in hookah, right? Because you need to pay attention to your teammates, what they're doing, did they clear hookah for you or not? You can always ask as well. Maybe they will use a microphone, who knows? And now you have a very easy lineup, super fast outside of your teleport when you just stand in this corner and you can do two things. First, if your teammates need a help to actually execute the push and you know that people already rotated from A to spawn, you can put your smoke on, on a one-way on CT. It's a very powerful smoke. It's a little bit awkward because it, it, it allows still people to go outside of CT, but they'll be affected and easily killed. So what do you do is put your diamond of the left click indication on this triangle, bottom of it. This big triangle, you put it on the bottom here. Oops, sorry. Like this. So it fills the bottom of the triangle, right? And it lands on the ledge of CT. Here. What does this achieve? Is that you have an easy way of killing people going outside of CT. Because when they go out... Their legs are visible when they're standing like this. They cannot see anything while their legs are still visible. And even if they go outside of here, like you can still see the legs where they cannot see you if you're standing in this corner. And how it looks from CT. Uh, it doesn't help with the elbow, right? But you can basically not push like outside of uh, CT if the smoke is active. So it's very powerful. Will help your teammates. Um, will help your teammates a lot when it comes to setups. Now, if it's already planted and you need to help your teammates with the post-plant lineups, this is one of those dedicated moments where you're a lurker on A, you didn't use a lot of utility and you still have your entire kit, right? And you can help your teammates. You can use this um, position uh, to put up your smoke on, uh, on default. So what do you do? You use this twig here, then you use your um, diamond from the left click again, and you put it on top of this twig here like this it lands on default it affects also middle so it, it's like a double lineup for those both uh both plants and now when you have that you can use your lineups from this spot for b right there are three lineups that i use uh depending on the position of the spike and i'll use three of the twigs here first the the most niche that you will use is for the for the right side of b side so how do you do it is you put up your line of health underneath the health for the first twig from those like there are like three groups of twigs right this group this group and this group so i like to like cut them in pieces so i know uh, it's easier to remember and easier to place in your memory right so I line up with the first twig on the left. And it lands on the default spot on the right side, which is the most niche, right? Uh, then second line up from the same position. And those are the most, most used for you, right? The default spot on the left is used on the twig of the second group of the middle one. And is the middle twig. Very easy to remember, right? Middle group, middle twig, this one. And what you align it with is the same thing that you aligned for the smoke on A short that you were throwing for lamps. If you guys remember already, this is the line of the health when it's a little bit thicker here, where my cursor shows, right? This spot. And you put this on the middle twig, this way. It lands on both default and the mid spot, right? 
so you have an easier time to like play the post plant lineups. Remember, you can also use that toxic orb from here, right? If you use this lineup. Now, middle spot you can also do, and you put the same health thicker line on this um on this twig. On second twig from the left from your right group. Was it this one? Yeah, yeah, it was this one. Like this. I don't really use it that often since it also affects default, it also affects mid, but even if someone is planted on mid, I typically use my default lineup. So, so yeah, that's basically it when you're lurking on A and you want to have a secondary uh, spot to help your teammates. This is actually very powerful uh, because you play two roles, right? You play your role as a lurker, and you still have an impact on B side because you can either help with the lineup from uh, for the one side uh, from the one way on CT right or just typically postman lineups. Now, when it comes to attacking B, like um, as a defaulter, right? I don't really like attacking B as a defaulter because I feel like the setup on A with the wall on truck and the lamps with smoke is just so powerful. You should condition your opponents with that lineup. It's just so powerful, it just makes players on A so uneasy that it will have bigger effect than saving your utility for an execute on B. And also, if you condition your opponents that you almost every single round put a setup on A, when you don't do it, they might think you're actually going B. Alright, now, what I do on B is typically I do an analogical wall to A truck, but for uh, elbow. And I, of course, want to affect the cubby, right? I, if you guys watched from the beginning, you know what I mean. So what I do is I do a wall like this, and I try to affect the long as well. I will, I will explain to you guys why in a moment, all right? So it affects cubby, affects elbow, affects also deep elbow, right? So we do it like this. There's a lot of leeway when it comes to using this wall, so don't worry about being precise. The main point is... Those two thingies need to land in cubby, right? And then it cuts off elbow as well. So essentially, it's like a it's like a big smoke that cuts off the elbow angle, and the person standing in here is very uneasy. As you can see, he cannot see shit. Like, and even if he stands here, he's clipping through the wall. So he's this is very uneasy for him, and it makes you like if you're standing in this corner, there's no way he is gonna hide on the left because he's affecting uh, affected by DK. Fine. So you have easier time checking this corner and just getting an easy kill on this on this position. Now, if I do this wall here, right? Sometimes I do start with the position in front of B short on teleport. When a, an example, a raise is checking the hookah uh, with uh, with the boom bot, I do the one way from here that lands on CT. Then I go back to long and do this wall, right? Let me just show you to you guys. Typically, the hookah is checked by the boom bot, right? Then I put the one way. I'm going long to join the rest of my team. I'm going to do the, the wall from here. I'm going to pop the smoke when I'm trying to attack with the side. The side and it looks like this. Right? So, it is a pretty good setup. But it's not as effective as the setup on A. Right? But I think this is the most obvious one that you want to use. Remember though that you're not going to have your Toxic Orb most likely for postman lineup. So, don't even try to play them. Okay? Play with your team on, on site um, in post plant and use your snake bites to delay pushes when you're out of fuel on CT. So whenever whenever your uh, your smokes are going down and you know about it, it's a good timing to use your snake bites. I'll show you, okay? Don't mind the positioning. The fuel is still there. It's still there. It's still there. It's still there. But it's going to turn off in a moment. I'm using the snake bite. And for six and a half second, you have time to refuel. And this buys another, like, two seconds or three seconds from the post plant. So, uh, yeah, do it like this. Use it. Use those intervals when you for, to refuel with your snake bites, right? Um, so that's one thing. If you don't want to use your wall for, um, for elbow, you can always put a smoke from this position on elbow. And what you do is you line up... Um, I don't know how to call it. Like this shape here, from underneath your snake bite, and you align it 
with this spot. Like this. It lands on the elbow. And it cuts off the corner. It's a little bit too... Uh, let's say inside of this of this um of the site so the player here can still spam you in garden which is something that i don't like but you cannot really do it deeper uh because it had other problems so this is probably the best one that you can do um but as i said then it leaves your wall open right to use on something else so you can use an example on the lurking wall lurking wall on a uh or something like that that's basically it, right? And now when it comes to lineups for for snake bites, as always, learn them, but try to not to use them, okay? Default plant, very easy to do. You use the same triangle. When I try to build lineups, I try to use as many uh, points that are the same for many lineups. You just use different HUD, but you know exactly where to aim, so it's easy to remember. So I use this one default you put your health line in the small spot when the uh when the where the walls meet and it lands on the default all right and why i'm why i'm using this spot and not like here in the fountain right it's the same premise it's the same premise that i want to be ready to fight i use the snake bite and i'm ready to fight Right? The snake bite didn't even land yet, and I can apply pressure already. So you don't rely only on the snake bite landing. You pr you rely on both your body and your gun and the snake bite. So I'm ready to fight, and if someone is pushing me, I'm already ready to fight, right? And remember, because of this wall, if you used it, right? People pushing you from garden, you will hear them because they will not shift. They will push you full speed, you will hear when they're coming, so you know exactly where the opponents are, and they don't know where did you use your lineup from. So typically, because of the wall, they will try to go to Fountain because every stupid Viper is using a lineup from this position, which is terrible, and I like you to use it from here. So I get easy kills because people going through Garden, they will be like this. <gasps> oh no, Viper postal lineup, hey, let's push her. Hey. They will never check this corner because that's the wall, and they'll be like, like <laughs> You will hear that they're actually pushing long, so you can just stand in this corner being very quiet, peek like this and get easy kills. This is actually happening in games, believe me or not, people are that stupid. They will never check this. They will never go through the wall because of the DK, right? Unless they already know that you play from this corner, which makes you easier to defend because they need to go through the wall. So they are DK'd and they have less HP, so easier targets to kill, right? Um, now from the same position, we also have uh, other lineups, right? So for the right side uh, angle, you use this cable here with this thicker thing to like attach it to the wall, and you use your right side, uh, right side uh, line. So you do it like this. And it lands here, right? For the middle, you use the same thing but instead of aiming for the cable, you aim for this, um, here, for this brick here, like this, this intersection between the bricks in this spot. I hope it doesn't bounce because I'm not really used to this lineup. Yeah. So it's kind of like this. All right. Uh, I guess, um... Oh, right. When you're sending an elbow, because there's a huge chance you pushed you pushed your wall at some point of the post plan, right? You can still use your uh, mollies to affect default positions, even though you're playing from elbow. It's very simple. It's simple, simple geometrics, right? You have two, two options. If it's default planted, you can bounce it from this wall up short, like this. Maybe not like this, exactly. A little bit tighter, um, a wider angle, like this essentially. So it lands in this position, right? And it's very fast on the execute. You don't have to peek as well. It's very good in 1v1s, but you can also pop it from here. So you aim a little bit below the, the cable, like this. You go forward. And you can adjust to the positions where the spike is planted as well. So it's like a improvised 
bounce, essentially, right? But it's also very powerful. Uh, okay, and I think that's it for today. Thank you for watching. More guides in the future. Bye-bye.